Okay, guys, so what we're going to do for this video is talk about the five themes of geography. We're going to go over these following themes. Number one, location. Number two, movement. Number three, region. Number four, place. And number five, human environment interaction. Okay, so let's start with number one, location, theme number one. The definition for location as the theme of geography is just where is it? Where is this place located? There's two different types of location that we're going to discuss. The first is absolute, and the second is relative. Now, what is absolute location? Absolute location is an exact place on Earth. That's what absolute location means. It's an exact place on Earth. And how do we find an exact place on Earth? Well, we find it using two specific lines, the first being latitude, and the second being longitude. Now we're going to get into more specifics about what latitude and longitude are and how we use them to find absolute location in another video, okay? But for now, just know that absolute location is an exact place on Earth. Now, if you were talking about absolute location in a place like El Paso, if you look at it on a smaller in a smaller um, context, say like in our city, absolute location would be a specific address. So then relative location means where an area is depending on where another is. So that's a little confusing. So let me give you an example. Say I wanted to tell you where I lived. Um, if I said I live two blocks away from Eastwood High School, that's an example of me using relative location because I'm explaining where one place is based on another area. So think about where you live. Um, what kinds of places could you use to describe where you live? Do you live two blocks from the Burger King? Do you live behind Chico's Tacos? Um, do you live right by the mall? Things like that are example of relative location. Now, if you were going to use absolute location, then you would give your specific address, like 123 Mayberry. Okay, so that's the difference between absolute and relative. Absolute is exact. Relative is using some other place to help you describe where that is. All right, theme number two, movement. How are people linked together? Uh, movement talks about how we are all connected, okay? How people in one area are able to contact or communicate with people in other areas. Now, we can do this through so many different ways. Um, we can communicate and, and transfer ideas in the form of goods, okay? So we see, um, I've seen like things from Japan come into anime stores here locally, okay? So that's an example of movement. That culture, that good is coming from a different area and coming into our location or even vice versa. Another example is people, okay? So when people move on trains, um, when people go on airplanes from one country to another, that's, that is an example of movement. Um, money is also transferred from here and there. Um, we've heard in the news a lot of talk about um, the money that is made in the United States being wired or, or sent over to Mexico. That's an example of movement. Ideas, now technology and our software, our internet, all that kind of stuff plays a huge part in, in the movement of ideas from place to place. Um, that includes culture. That's the reason why we have um, Chinese buffets or why we have Italian restaurants because the concept of those things moved into our particular areas. Okay, so that's movement for you. How do things move? Forms of transportation, by word of mouth, by computers and satellites and telephones. Through movement, we all connect our world together. And because of all this increased movement and ability to transfer not only goods, but people and ideas, we have globalization. Okay, so that's your next word. Globalization is the movement uh, between all people around around Earth. Now, it is the exchanging of ideas. It is the exchanging uh, of culture, okay, that we see in our everyday lives. Now, globalization is a huge concept that we're going to be talking about in world geography. When we are interdependent on each other for our economy, for our culture, for our politics, for the way we socialize, and our technology, this is globalization. So let me give you an example. Apple, your iPhones, um, the ideas for them came out of Silicon Valley in California. However, they were produced 
in China. And now we have that actual product in our hand here in the United States. But not only not only do we have that, but people in Canada have that. People in Mexico have that. People in England have that. Um, people in Japan and Russia, everybody's got iPhones, right? Now, the, the idea for the iPhone and then the actual building of of the iPhone came from two different countries, but then spread all over the world. Okay, that's a, one example of globalization, how we are all sharing in these products and ideas. Um, we also get a, a, an exchanging of culture. It's why, um, you know, we talked about the Chinese rapper um, called Fat Shady. <laughs> he got his name from Slim Shady, right? That's an American concept. That's an American culture thing. But that's that's moved all over the globe. And even the concept of rap itself, you find it in all different continents. So here are some examples of, of McDonald's all around the world. This is also an example of globalization, movement of ideas. OK, um, here you see a political cartoon of this guy's like, OK, happy Labor Day in the United States. However, this banner was made in China. OK, that's really strange. Um, here you see Nike uh, being a global product. Here you see Pizza Hut being a global product, KFC, Coca-Cola. OK, so the transfer of ideas. So globalization is basically the, the blending of business, technology and culture. Uh, theme number three, region. The definition for region is what does this area have in common? Okay, so um, a region will describe areas that have something in common. Um, regions can be big or they can also be small, okay? So let's take a look at three different types of regions. The first one is formal, the second is functional, and the third is perceptual. Now, you're not only going to have to list these three, but briefly explain on your paper what each of these is okay so let's take a look first at formal region a formal region is clearly defined like the united states the united states is an example of a formal region but so are the states within it um, so are the cities within it so a formal region is an area where certain characteristics are found throughout the area so for example the characteristic that we all share is maybe our u.s constitution or that we all speak a common language, or that everybody who lives here, uh, the capital for this country is in Washington, D.C., okay? So a formal region has clear definition within it. The next is functional region, okay? And just like you see that first part of the word function, it means working together. Um, having one central place and is surrounded by the area that it affects. Now, before we go into the picture, let me give you an example. Um, Verizon... Verizon Data Network, okay, they use um, they use their little, I don't know, what are they called, the, the satellites or the poles that they use to transmit um, the ability for us to connect to um, the World Wide Web. That is an example of a functional region. Um, they have their cellular towers and then wherever they transmit kind of looks like a web all over our all over our country right that's an example of a functional reason region because it is serving a purpose let's take a look at another type of functional region this would be um hershey the hershey company okay so they have their central location in pennsylvania but from there these hershey's go everywhere you can even find them in the circle k by your house right so the areas that these chocolates and these candies go would be part of a functional region whatever it is connected to now, next, perceptual region. This is the third. This is an area that is defined by common stereotypes, okay? So if I were to look at the United States and try and break it up into like, okay, where do all these fans live? Um, here we would say, okay, everybody who lives in this area pretty much goes for the Cowboys or everybody that lives here pretty much goes for the Texans or everybody that lives here pretty much goes for the Cardinals. Here you have a bunch of Broncos fans. They're not very clearly defined. Obviously, if you have somebody living in El Paso who happens to be a Seahawks fan or happens to be a 49ers or Raiders fan, it, it, they live here in this general area. It's not super specifically defined, but just like stereotypically people who live here we understand that there are exceptions but for general purposes okay for the most part people that live here in the san diego area are chargers fans and etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so it's just um defined by stereotypes so here's an example of that okay theme number four place Place describes what is it like, and it is much more descriptive in terms of its physical characteristics, 
Um, so here you might say, you know what, it, 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 it's uh, vastly populated by forest. Um, it's got rocky hills. Okay, so this is where you get very specific with your description. Um, here's another example of place. How would you describe that? Okay, uh, place. What is it like? Each place has its own distinct characteristics. Now, you can not only have physical characteristics, but you also have human characteristics as well. What makes it different um, as far as humans are concerned? Okay, so what's the difference between location and place? I know they, they kind of seem a little similar. Um, the thing is that location will tell you where it is and place will describe it. Where is it? What does it look like? Where is it? What does it look like? All right, and theme number five, the very last one, is human environment interaction. And the, the concept here is how do we interact with our environment? How do we affect the environment and how does the environment affect us? So for example, here, if these people live in a very cold and snowy place, now look, what we have invented are snowboards um, to be able to not only have fun, but even maybe move around the areas. Um, you have snowmobiles, you have uh, chains that people put on tires to be able to drive through the snow, etc. That is an example of human environment interaction. That is the environment affecting us and the way we work as humans. Now, on the flip side, we also affect our environment. We 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 cause changes to the environment by the form of planting trees, um, recycling, also negative uh, littering. Okay, um, so changes to the environment can be good, bad or both, okay, depending even on your perspective. So that's human environment interaction. So tomorrow we're going to be working on uh, the concept of Mr. Help. This is going to be our assignment, Mr. Help. M stands for movement, R stands for region, H E human environment interaction, L for location, P for place. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.